not great, but okay, we're still gonna start. So the first announcement is that the midterm is this Friday. And in particular, there's gonna be no class. It's gonna be 24 hour midterm, just the whole Friday from midnight to midnight of the next day. And uh, that's it, no class, no homework due this Friday. No homework. Okay. So uh, yeah, and, and today I'm gonna I'm going to talk about continue, I guess, the subject of counting counting permutations. So uh, yeah, last time I, I gave you a sort of a detour, which was not related not related to the re rest of the stuff. And today I'm going to kind of do it properly. So I needed to set up some notation. And yeah, so first of all. Sn is going to denote the set of permutations. Set of permutations of bracket n. And uh, yeah, if I have a permutation, I have a permutation w in Sn, then the values, so because it's a bijection, so the values are going to be denoted either w of i or w sub i. And that's the same. Uh, oh, I see. I see all the faces. Nice. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so just sometimes I'm, this is more convenient. Sometimes this, this is more convenient. And I'm also going to use several different ways to write down a permutation. So one way is the one line notation. So I can write w is equal to w1, w2, etc., all the way up to wn, just n numbers here. And that would mean that w sends 1 to w1 and 2 to w2 and etc. and to wn, which is another convenient kind of more verbose way is the two line notation where I can write 1, 2, all the way up to n on the first row, and w1, w2, wn on the second row. So that's, uh, these are the two ways to define a permutation, and then there's going to be another way later, which is the cycle notation. So there is a third way, which is completely different from the previous two, and we're going to discuss this probably in the next lecture or something like this. So yeah, that's the notation part, so somewhat boring. Now let me try to, uh, yeah, any questions so far or on the previous material or on the midterm or anything else? No, no questions, okay. So uh, yeah, today we're gonna continue. So previously I did Eulerian numbers and today I'm gonna do well, no, sorry. Previously, I did Euler, Euler numbers, but let's forget about those numbers. And today I'm going to discuss Eulerian numbers, which are defined using descents. So uh, given the permutation w uh, and an integer i between 1 and n minus 1, I say that i is a descent of w if wi is bigger than wi plus 1. Will today's lecture material be on the midterm? No. Uh, no the midterm is going to include all lectures in the lecture notes, so everything up to the last pre-recorded lecture, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, right, so descent is just, if you have a permutation, Maybe I should try some permutation. Um, 6, 1, 2, 7, 5, 3, 9, 4, 8. Yeah. Then the descents are going to be so 6 is bigger than 1. And is there a question? No? Okay. 
seven, five, five, three, nine is bigger than four. So, uh, and the descents are, so I as a descent is, it's a position, right? So if I record the, yeah, let me try two line notation. It's gonna be convenient. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I record W like this, then the descents, yeah, so let me, the descent set of W is by definition the set of all descents. Wi is bigger than Wi plus one. Oops. So, and lowercase des of W is the number of descents. So, if W is this permutation here, then what would be the descent set? Okay. Can somebody tell me? V of W is one, four, five, and seven. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Yeah, so for each descent, I record the position of the of the previous guy. Okay, and the lowercase, the number of descents of W is four, and just the size of the set. Okay. And the Eulerian numbers are, by definition, by definition, are denoted a of n comma k. It's so it's going to be slightly weird, but okay. Uh, it's a number of permutations with a given number of descents. The number of descents has to be equal to k minus one. So instead of k. Here um, it's going to be more convenient to use k minus one. And that's just the standard notation. So um, yeah, maybe I should try an example. Yeah. So let's say here's an example. Maybe n is equal to three and k is equal to two. So I'm looking at permutations, permutations with one descent because k is equal to 2, so I need to take k minus 1. And indeed, so there are the all possible permutations are 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2. You can see that each of them, uh, each of them has a single descent. So in particular, a of 3, comma 2 is equal to 4. Yeah. So, so we're going to study these Eulerian numbers. Let me show you a table. Yeah. Here is a table. So you can see a of three comma two is four, which is here. Right. N is uh, n is on the left, and k goes on the right. And yeah, so the it's again a number triangle which has all ones on, on the diagonal and on the left vertical line, right? Uh, because, well, what are these? So a n comma one is the number of permutations with zero descents. So that's just, uh, there's just one permutation, one, two, three, all the way up to n. And a of n comma n has to have n minus one descents, so that's also one. Here the permutation is the reverse, n n minus one, all the way up to one. Yeah, so these are the the ones over here. And okay, so you get some triangle of numbers, and our usual, it's similar to binomial coefficients or Stirling numbers that we had previously. So let me try to first come up with a recurrence for these numbers. And yeah, so here is a, oh, oh, I have a table, nice. I have a table here. So yeah, here is a recurrence. Uh, proposition. It's that a of n comma k is equal to k times a n minus one comma k plus n minus k plus one times a of n minus one comma k plus one. 
oops, sorry, k minus 1. So maybe, so you can see that I'm using, I have some coefficients here. Let me try, let me try an example. Maybe I should do 26, right? 26, uh, sorry, let's try, let's see. Example, n is equal to five, k is equal to two, a of n comma k is equal to 26, which according to the proposition is supposed to be k times the number above it, which is 22, which is 11, plus n minus k plus one. That is four, four times the number up and left. So four times one, that's 26. Or you can do 66, that's gonna be like three times 11 plus three times 11 and etc. So hopefully, hopefully you're conv convinced that it works. Yeah. So, and by the way, let me compare while I'm here. So let me just write down the same, the similar recurrences for, so, uh, just to show you how similar and somewhat different they are the binomial coefficients n choose k, the recurrence was n minus one choose k plus n minus one choose k minus one. Right, that's the Pascal triangle. And Sterling numbers of the second kind, the recurrence was k times s of n minus one comma k plus s of n minus one comma k minus one. So you always kind of you always decrease n by one, and you always take k and k minus one in each case, right? And then the only difference is the coefficients. If they're both one, then you get binomial coefficients. If one is k and the other one is one, then you get Stirling numbers. And if it's k and n minus k minus one, you get Eulerian numbers. So it's kind of neat that the pattern, well, anyways. Uh, Anyways, let me try to prove this. Or maybe somebody can tell me how do I prove the recurrence like this. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a great idea. And yeah, so, so the method is actually similar to what I did in the previous lecture, I think, which is, uh, you take a permutation, then you look at where the largest number is. So, uh, so let's say I take let w be a permutation, and then what I want to do is I want to remove remove n from from the one line notation. And the, the claim is that uh, is that the number of the number of descents either either is going to stay the same or it's going to drop or it's going to drop by one. So let's try to examine the cases carefully. When does it stay the same? Or Is the same. So you have some permutation, right? You have some w1, w2, etc. There's some x and then n and then y, etc. So uh, this here is a descent, right? And so this is a descent. And here, this is not a descent, no matter we, what x and y are. And so if you remove n, then you're gonna get x and y, right? So the, in order for the number of descents to stay the same, you have to have, x has to be bigger than y. So 
So that's one possibility. Or another possibility is where n is the last letter. So if n is if n is at the end, then there is there is no descent. There is no descent here. So if I just remove n, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to change the number of descents. So yeah, in other words. What am I trying to say? Yeah, I'm trying to say that uh, in this case, if you if you remove n, you get a permutation of bracket n minus one with k minus one descents. Because remember, uh, yeah, let, let, let's assume that w. Uh, has k minus one descents because yeah, if I want the left hand side counts permutations with k minus one descents, so w has k minus one descents, and if I remove n, I still get a permutation with k minus one descents, and therefore there is going to be exactly there is going to be k ways k places places where I can insert and to get a permutation with k minus 1 descents. So in other words, the number of options here is, is k times a of n minus 1 comma k. Does it make sense or? Okay. Yeah, so that's the that's the first term in the recurrence, and the second term comes when the number of descents drops. So when when is the number of descents drops by one? So here it stays the same. If it drops by one, that means that uh, so I had dot 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 x n y dot 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 and so this is a descent, and if I remove n, this stops being a descent. So I have to have x less than y. Or I could also have n at the beginning and then dot, 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 dot. Because then th if n is the first letter, then this is going to be a descent. And then if I remove n, I get rid of the descent. So in other words, uh, when I remove n, I get a permutation with a specified number of descents, one less. So the number of options, number of options here is what? I have to take a of n minus one comma k minus one, and I have to multiply it by the number of places where I can insert n to get to get the permutation of to get to get back to w. And so how many places are there? Well, I, I can only insert at the beginning or in the middle of a non-descent. Right, so x if x, a, x is less than y, then I can I can insert n here. So it's sort of it's not actually it's well it's n minus k plus one times n minus k plus one. So it's basically n minus the number of descents plus one. So yeah, anyways. Uh, so maybe I should try an example. If I, if I have one, three, four, two, five, then where if I want to insert six, preserving the number of descents, then I can do it. I can do it either here, right, or whenever one is less than three, three is less than four. Two is less than five, so there is four places. Yeah. And and the remaining places are descents. Anyways, that's the that's basically the proof. So any questions? Any 
any questions on the proof. Yeah, so that's no questions. Yeah, we, we've done it a bunch of times already. That's sort of also boring. But then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to try to see what kind of generating function I get from such a such recurrence, right? Uh, so I want to I want to play with generating functions. Generating function for a and comma k. And immediately you see a problem, right? And there is a problem, which is that it's a it's a triangle. It's not a sequence of numbers, but it's a triangle of numbers. So how do you uh, a of n comma k depends on two parameters? Yeah. So so there is several things I'm going to be able to do. Right? If you have, I can kind of take different. I can take the rows or maybe the columns or maybe the diagonals. I can, I can kind of extract some sequences from it or I can do something more complicated. So let me try to do, let me first try to do the rows. And so let me just by, uh, by definition, let me say that a, a n of x is equal to the sum for k from 1 to n, x to the k times a of n comma k. This is for n greater or equal to 1, and also let me send, set a0 of x to be just equal to 1. Right. So in other words, and we're going to be doing this more later, uh, so an another way to write this function, right, because each a of n comma k is the number of certain permutations, right? you basically count each permutation exactly once in this sum. So you can write a n of x to be uh, the sum over all permutations, w in Sn, of x to the 1 plus the number of descents of w. And then the, the coefficient is going to be the coefficient of this sum at x to the k is exactly a of n comma k. So yeah, here is the here is the generated function identity. Well, one of the possible identities for for these. So these are called Eulerian polynomials. And it turns out that they participate in a pretty cool identity. So proposition uh, for each for each given n. So I might I, I could have tried to look for a, for an identity for all these polynomials simultaneously. But for now, I'm going to just focus. I'm going to fix n. Right, so I'm going to focus on one polynomial. And it turns out that the, so that's a little different from what we've seen before. The sum of m to the n times x to the m is equal to a n of x over 1 minus x to the n plus 1. Which is, so this is weird, right? It's a little bit. Um, what can I say about it? But like the sum on the left has nothing to do with permutations or anything. But it turns out that if you want a closed form, right, if you want to write it down as a rational function, then you're going to see just Eulerian numbers in the numerator. Right? So the numerator is going to be, uh, if you plug in like x equal to 1, it's going to be n factorial. So it's it's very combinatorial thing, even though on the left, looks weird yeah it looks non-combinatorial let's say I, I should say so so how do I prove this one any ideas
Yeah, this is this one's actually tricky. So, yeah, I don't think we, we've done this kind of proof before. Uh, yeah, let me try. Let me try to explain. So, what I'm gonna prove, I'm gonna prove it by induction. Induction on n. And the base case. Base case is n equals to zero. So what happens when n is equal to zero? Well, I, I just get rid of the term of m to the n, right? So the sum x to the m is equal to one over one minus x. So that is true. And well, and now how do I I want to do the induction step. So suppose suppose the statement is true for some n. I want to I want to do this for n plus one. So how do I get from this sum for n to the same sum for n plus one? What's the what's the trick? Let's say I forget about the right-hand side and I only have the left-hand side. Just multiply by m. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so, so it's confusing because I'm summing over m. Uh, n is usually with sum over n, but here n is fixed. But so you can't multiply by m. It's not. Uh, uh, yeah, y I mean. Maybe I should try an example. For n equals to two, let's say the left hand side is well one. Yeah, is, wh what is it? Uh, I guess zero plus one squared times x plus two squared times x squared plus three squared times x cubed plus etc. Yeah. So any ideas how how to do the induction step? Last call. Okay. Yeah, so the idea is if you see the sum like this, if you want to multiply each term by m, right? But m m gets in increasing, m, m is not a constant. So what I need to do is I need to take the derivative. So take the derivative and yeah so let me even let me even copy the so suppose i know this formula for some n and then take the i take the derivative and multiply multiply by x so let's see what happens on the left hand side when I take the derivative, I, the, I, get, I multiply by m, right? So I get like m to the n plus one. Uh, the sum or m, yeah, it has to, now, now it goes from, from one to, to infinity, m to the n plus one times x to the m. Right? Because if, if I take the derivative and then I multiply back by x, then I still get x to the m, except for the first term. So, and well, on the right hand side, what I get is uh, I need to take the derivative of the ratio, whatever it is. A prime of x, well, I have to multiply it by x times a prime n of x times 1 minus x to the n plus 1 minus 
uh, a n of x times what is it times n plus one times the derivative of well, one minus x to the n, and there is an extra minus sign coming from the minus x, so this becomes a plus. And then I divide by one minus x to the two n plus two. Yeah, that does it work out? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have the f I have hopefully the same formula down here. Yeah, and so. Yeah, w wait, why does it? Like, all right, never mind. So I, now I just need to simplify. So if I, well, first of all, I can, I can replace one by zero, right? Because uh, when m is zero, there is nothing m greater or equal to zero, uh, m to the n plus one, x to the m. Now, if I simplify the right-hand side, and what I get, it, well, I, I can divide by one plus one minus x to the n, basically. So I, what I have is x times one, one minus x, a prime n of x plus a, well, n plus one uh, times a n of x. I think that's the n plus one times x times a n of x divided by y minus x to the n plus two. So the claim is that, the claim is that after I simplify, I get this kind of formula. And what I want, what I want to prove, want to prove is that, is that the left hand side, right, that's my goal to prove that the left hand side x to the m is equal to a n plus one of x divided by one minus x to the n plus two. Just the same formulas here. So the, the kind of, the, in other words, what I need to show is that the numerators are the same. What I need to show is that a n plus one of x is equal to whatever x times one minus x, a prime n of x plus n plus one x a n of x. And, and the claim is that the miracle sort of that happens for Eulerian numbers is that is that uh, yeah, and I'm gonna leave it as an exercise, for you. but it's it's not a not not a very complicated exercise. But yeah, so exercise is that if I just take this equality here and I take the coefficient of x to the k on each side, taking co the coefficient of x to the k on each side. What I get is a of n plus one comma k should be equal to k times a of n comma k plus n minus k plus two a of n comma k minus one. So let's see, let me try to do half of the exercise. If I just take the coefficient of x to the k here, right? Then just by definition, it's a of n plus one comma k. Now here on the right, uh, so this term comes from x times the derivative of a n of x, right? Because if I take the derivative, that, that means I multiply each a of n comma k by k. So that's, that's one of the terms and and the other term is, it comes from whatever is left, right? So it comes from n plus one, x a n of x, which would give you, uh, so yeah, so this would, gi would give you n plus one uh, times a of n comma k minus one, right? And then, and then you subtract 
you subtract x times the der derivative minus x times the derivative of, of, a, of a sub n, which would give you, sorry, x squared. Right, there is an x squared. Yeah, anyways, it uh, sh should give you something like k times k minus 1 times a of, um, I'm trying to guess, a of n comma k minus 1. Yeah. I don't know if it, if it makes sense what I'm doing or not. But I, yeah, I, I'm just taking the coefficient of x to the k kind of lazily without actually having to write down all the, all the things. Yeah, and so the conclusion here is that if you compare this recurrence to the recurrence we uh, showed bijectively, combinatorially, right? There is this recurrence here. Then what, what you see is, what you see is that just uh, we have increased n by one and that's it. So that's the same recurrence as the, these two recurrences are the same. So that's the end of the proof. Because this is same as the recurrence we just proved. So in other words, this recurrence, uh, or whatever this recurrence is, it looks kind of strange slightly, but it sort of, it, it gives, it, it can be written in such a way that it basically gives you this nice sum, this nice generating function. So yeah, that's, and that's the first generating function identity I wanna mention today. So any, any questions on this proof? Everything completely clear or? Okay. Yeah, please feel free to ask questions. This is, uh, if everybody stays silent, then uh, we're not gonna, well, I'm, I'm just gonna keep going and then it's gonna start getting faster and faster. So please stop me as much as you can. Um, yeah. So, so, okay, this is nice, right? This is nice generate the function, but still, I mean, it gives you each individual Eulerian polynomial, but I want to kind of capture all of them at the same time. So the question is, how do I, and again, again, it depends on, well, now the Eulerian polynomials, they depend on only one parameter, right? So uh, anyway, let me try to write down a theorem, which includes all Eulerian numbers at the same time. The sum over, now I'm summing over n as usual. A n of x, it's a polynomial in x times t to the n divided by n factorial is equal to one minus x over one minus x times e to the one minus x times t. So a few remarks are in order. This is a two variable formal power series. Previously we only did one variable case and I'm not gonna try to kind of get the whole theory to work for uh, multivariable cases, but everything works basically the same. So there, it's, not, it's not hard to extend the theory to several variables. And you have to kind of deal with the issues of stabilization and, st and stuff, and it's all the same as for one variable, basically. So, but because, in, because uh, A of N, so but in other words, if you take the coefficient of T, right, and then you take a coefficient of X, then you're gonna see Eulerian numbers in the Taylor expansion of this function on the right-hand side. 
So let me try to, okay, let me try to give you a proof, except that uh, b since I haven't, haven't defined all these several variable polynomial varial series rigorously, uh, it's gonna be a proof sketch, if I'm being completely honest. But uh, I mean, it can be completed without much work to, a, to an actual proof. So yeah, how do I, how do I prove this? Well, let's see. Uh, let's say I try to, well, what I'm gonna do is I have this proposition here, right? And I'm just gonna take this, I'm just gonna sum this proposition over all n. So, uh, recall that we have the sum over m greater equal to zero, m to the n, x to the m, is equal to a n of x over one minus x to the n plus one. That this is the thing we just proved. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sum over the right hand side for n greater or equal to zero, a n of x over one minus x to the n plus one. And then I'm gonna multiply it by, let's say I have some other variable, y to the n over n factorial. So now I can, now I, I can, that's the left hand side is over here, so I can substitute and I get a double, doubly infinite sum. Sum m greater or equal to zero, let's see, uh, m to the n, x to the m, y to the n over n factorial. So, uh, right, I just, so far I just plugged in this. Uh, well, I can, I should put the parentheses here, right? But actually, because the, because this sum depends only on n, I can, I can remove the parentheses as well. Oops. So I get a double, doubly infinite sum. And, uh, and now I can, I have m to the n and y to the n. So I can, I can rewrite the sum as the sum over, over so I, I want to switch the order of summation, which in analysis or in calculus you should, you should think very carefully before you do that. And here I also have to justify it somehow, but uh, it works. So x to the m times the sum over n, uh, m times y to the n over n factorial. So, uh, and now I can, uh, I can compute the product here, it's just the exponential. So an exponential of, of m times y, e to the m times y, which, yes, yeah, so, and now I can, now I can, so this is x times e, e to the y to the m, so I can, I can again compute it ex exactly, and it's just gonna be one over one minus, I'm just summing all powers of x to the, e of x times e to the y. x times e to the y. Does it make sense or? Okay. Yeah, I'm, these are all sort of modular rigorous justification. These are very simple algebraic manipulations. And so I get that uh, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And well, now I have to, now I have to get from here, from this left hand side to this left hand side. And they are similar, but, but sort of different. Right? Here I'm dividing by the extra one minus x. Well, okay, I can, I can, what I can do is I can, let's say I take the, left hand side. So what, what I can do is I can substitute, instead of y I'm gonna, I'm gonna put t times x, t times one minus x. One minus x. 
because I want the 1 minus x to cancel with the 1 minus x here. So what I'm going to get is the sum over n greater than or equal to 0, a n of x over just 1 minus x times t to the n over n factorial. So it's a nice little trick which helps me get rid of one, the extra 1 minus x. But st I still have one of them, but I can move it, I can move it out of the summation. 1 over 1 minus x times mm -hmm. a n of x times t to the n over n factorial. And well, so that's the, that was the left hand side of, of what I did here. And the right hand side is 1 over, so the claim is that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus, and I have to plug, instead of y, I have to plug in t times 1 minus x. x times e to the t times 1 minus x. So, so I'm almost, I'm almost done. I have this equality here, and I need to get here. So what I just do is I just multiply multiply by 1 minus x and I, and I arrive at a n of x times t to the n over n factorial is equal to 1 minus x over 1 minus x e to the t times 1 minus x. So uh, I mean it is what it is, right? I am just, wh what was the purpose of this whole stuff? I guess, I guess to demonstrate the power of generating functions, okay? or our power as mathematicians right now. We can, we can commit all sorts of generated functions because we can manipulate these algebraic sums so well. We can swap the order, we can differentiate, whatever. So we can find pretty complicated uh, generated functions, but also another Another kind of outcome is that Eulerian numbers are pretty nice. They have a nice generating function, which is slightly more complicated than we usually had, but uh, but still it it has a closed form, right? So it's it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty cool result. So yeah. Anyways, I think I'm I'm almost out of time. So if you have any questions, any questions. Please let me know. If not, then I'll see you, I don't know when, next Wednesday, right?